Welcome back to Colorado Sports Connection. We're coming to you from Big Bill's New York Pizza in Centennial, and we're talking with the talented writer for the Denver Post, Mark Kisla. Now, Mark, you've dealt with the Colorado athletes, but you also deal with the managers, coaches, and general managers. Any interesting stories there? I don't live too far from Big Bill's. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I walked here today, and, and several years ago, I moved into a neighborhood that I can see looking past you at this window, and uh, I didn't know it at a time, but the man who lived directly behind me was Bob Gebhard, the general manager of the Rockies. Sure. And I criticized him a number of times, and I, I advocated that he has lost his effectiveness as a GM, and they should go in a different direction. His wife didn't take very kindly to that, and I understand that because his wife loves Bob Gebhardt. I don't. I, I just discussed Bob Gebhardt's job. They're, 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 like, like years ago, there used to be Tupperware parties. Now there's parties where you go to the neighborhood and you buy women's clothes. The ladies in the neighborhood gather to buy women's clothes. Uh, and they go into a bedroom and they try clothes on, clothes on. They have curtains or whatever. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. In a state of disrobe, my wife and Bob Gebhardt's wife met each other. <laughs> and it's the face-to-face -face conversation. It wasn't only face-to-face. -face. There was more than face exposed at that point. I think our producers met like that, too. <laughs> yes, they oh, did. One time. Yes, they did. And so if you strip it away, you strip all your defenses away, you can't really have an argument anymore. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Everything's stripped bare, so to speak. And you don't really have any reason to fight. And so, again, if you get past the issue we're talking about, and you and I are talking as human beings, um, we're good. Clint Hurdle knew as Rocky's manager, I would second guess him. I would criticize him. But when he had a daughter born with a serious disease, yes. he also knew that I cared deeply about him. There's a difference between what I think about him as a baseball manager and what I think about him as a father. And if we can make that connection, then we really don't have anything to argue about. And you bring up a good point here because on your articles, I have to ask you this, are, are you just writing that because you're trying to sell the newspapers or do you honestly feel that way as a sports writer? Well, number one, the number one job of a newspaper, and there's a lot of things a newspaper does, but the number one job of a newspaper is the same thing as the number one job as of a car dealership or the number one job of a restaurant sell. Either you're selling newspapers, you're selling Buicks, or you're selling pizzas. And if you don't sell, you're not going to be in business very long. Having said that, I'm disagreeable enough, contrarian enough, argumentative enough, passionate enough, that I don't have to make it up. I always believe what I write. Sometimes I'm 100% wrong, and I'm sure you've picked up the paper or gotten online at uh, denverpost.com some mornings and go, how could he possibly think that? That's what I really think, but I'm not always right, and you know that, and everybody listening knows that. I always agree with you. I, I always agree with you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'd be really worried about you if you did. One of the questions I do have to ask you about, we were talking about the Rockies, uh, the Montfort brothers. Yes, sir. You've had some articles written about them on taking that next step forward to really improving this team. What do you really think should happen with the ownership for the Colorado Rockies? I mean, I don't think anything's going to happen because the owners want to pass this franchise down to their next of kin. What my argument with the Monforts is, I think they're good men. I and Charlie Monfort in particular, I know. I like him a lot. I don't think they have enough chips to truly play the game of poker with the Yankees or the Phillies or the Red Sox. Or, or teams that, are, that have a lot of money in a sport that doesn't have a salary cap. But Selig, the commissioner of baseball all the time, says, uh, look at the Tampa Bay Rays, or look at, look at the Rockies, look at all the, the lower tier, the mid-market teams that don't have such big uh, payrolls. Look how many of those teams get to the World Series. True. But how often do any of those teams actually win the World Series? In recent years, it's usually the Phillies, or the Yankees, or the Red Sox, or teams that spent by the World Series. 
We're going to take a quick break, and I have some more questions for you leading to the Denver Broncos and some of the head coaches that you've dealt with in the past. We'll continue our talk with Mark Kisla right here on Colorado Sports Connection.